In the report it says that um, the main proximate cause of the collapse was the fact that Marion Roberts deviated substantially from the general arrangement drawings provided by Formscaf. In my opinion it was, was grossly irresponsible because um, um, in, in, in view, seeing it in, in line with my, my engineering judgment and, and the fact that um, the works that had been erected there was so uh, small comparison to the, the general arrangement, um, uh, there was trouble was in the making. And on top of this, uh, when prior sections of the, of the um, structure had been assembled, they had a problem inserting 48 bolts. Uh, between um, the eastern uh, quarter and the quarter on the western side. And somebody, somebody at head office, at, at Marion Roberts head office, at a meeting around about the 10th or the 11th of October 2015, said that those bolts would not you know, affect the stability of the structure, or would, not, would have no effect on the structure. Well, if they were left out, obviously they'd have no effect. But in my opinion, that was the occasion for somebody to stand up and say, look, we have a problem here. But they walked out of that meeting and continued on the, 19th of the, uh, on the, on the night of the 13th of October 2015 and erected that final quarter, which came down about 12 hours later. As far as I know, they have, um, they have recommended that um, four, four um, instances be um, prosecuted for breach of a number of regulations relating to health and safety, occupational safety, and so on. So it is the, the, main, cons uh, the main contractor, Marian Roberts. It is um, the Johannesburg Development Agency. Um, it is a consultant that was em uh, employed by the Johannesburg um, Development Agency, and it was Formscaf um, who provided the, um, the general arrangement drawings. Now, I noticed, as far as Formscaf goes, I noticed that some of the, the criticism was rather petty, where they were commenting on the, um, the extent to which the title block had been completed on, on the general arrangement drawings. Essentially what happened was Marion Roberts deviated substantially from um, the general arrangement drawings provided by um, uh, form scaff. On the drawings it showed this permanent works is constructed to deck level. Now at the time of the collapse Marion Roberts were busy putting the piles in, for, uh, busy with the pile cap for this structure. They hadn't reached, they hadn't come out of the ground with it yet as shown here. Okay? And also in the report I mentioned that this pier on the eastern side should also have been, um, been constructed. Now instead of, of doing this work first, um, um, Marion Roberts delivered the equipment that you see here, this, this, this um, lattice work here. These are um, double sets, it was uh, four times two, it was 12 sets of heavy duty lattice girders which were pre-assembled on site in, in halves, this half and then that half. They were supposed to have been bolted together during assembly. Uh, after, after lifting from the ground. So none of these bolts were actually um, installed here, so that was a total of 96 bolts. Now here, these dotted areas here indicates what was referred to in the inquiry as mass scaffolding that was omitted by Marion Roberts. So all of this was omitted. So, so the intention was for this structure to be able to but up against that structure that provided lateral stability. Instead it was just a skimpy bit here which was almost like one leg of a, of a Weber, um, Weber bride, just one leg of a Weber bride on this side and the third leg here on this side. Okay, then the major part that was relied on during the analysis of the, um, of the structural ability of this as-built structure when it came to analyzing what was um, what this thing was capable of, of withstanding. This little bit on this side they regarded as negligible. This little diagonal strut here wasn't even on the drawings. It was something that Marion Roberts had improvised. Nobody gave evidence about it. 
So these were diagonal struts that somebody put in because they were concerned about the structure. Then on this side, there was very little um, diagonal bracing um, inside this structure. So it was also inferior. In the report, they spell out to the, to the, to the letter how many clamps and diagonal bracings, both vertical diagonals and horizontal diagonals that were missing over here and over here. But during the analysis, they focused on this central structure, which was the only substantial part that was supposed to perform. Um, you know, to, to hold this, this skimpy structure up, okay? When they looked at it in detail, they found many defects inside this, in spite of the fact that they had uh, assembled it, there were many defects, okay? So what happened then um, during the collapse is that um, the normal um, course of things, this, this um, structure has to stand for about three months and it has to um, withstand winds and so on. Now, there was wind on the day and Marion Roberts had a wind meter up on the, uh, at their site office and during the investigation they found that the wind was blowing in many directions during the day. Okay, so Professor Farnes van Sale analyzed the wind and filtered out some of the wind and he focused on the wind that was blowing in the east-west direction. And he, he was able to indicate that um, at, at a part of the day, the wind was actually holding the structure up. Another part of the day, it would be inclined to, to cause the structure to collapse. But in his testimony, he said that the reason for the collapse was that the, the ability of this structure to withstand lateral forces was less than the, the lateral forces acting on it. So its resistance was less than what it had to withstand. And that's why it collapsed. And that is just a logical answer to give. No matter how it collapsed, that would have been the case.